Okay, our next speaker is Ilan Löbel from NYU Stern, and he will talk about um, algorithm, algorithmic pricing of online services. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for the invitation to talk here. So I'm going to talk uh, uh, based on a couple of papers that are co-authored with Jennifer and Christian, with Ozan Kandogan from MIT, with uh, Sham Kakari, and with Hamid Nazarzadeh, who was a postdoc here with me. And the theme of the talk is uh, cloud computing. And in particular, cloud computing is a very big business. It's growing very fast. And it's something that Microsoft, among other companies, are investing very heavily on. And what we're going to think about is what's a proper business method, a proper business model for selling cloud computing. And let me give away that what is the takeaway of the talk before we even start. And the, po and the point that I want to make is that even this question of what's a proper business model, can it actually be thought of as a very quantitative question? And we can model this as, as an optimization question with the game theory components into it. So it's a problem that we can treat it mathematically. So this is the takeaway before we even start. So suppose you're a customer. You want to buy some cloud computing. You go to the Microsoft Azure website. This is basically what you find. You find two options. Option number one is you can buy it on demand. So you pay to run an instance. You pay per hour. Option number two is you buy a subscription. A subscription means you pay 20%, you pay 20 percent off the on-demand price, but you're also committing to buy at least a certain quantity over six months. Now, let's suppose you go to our competitor and you go to Amazon. If you go to Amazon, these are the options you're going to find available. The first two options are very similar. One is on demand, which is, again, price per hour. The second option is a subscription, where you pay to have a, for a one-year or a three-year commitment, and then the price per hour is lower. But you also have a third option, which is a spot market. In the spot market, basically, uh, the users put in bids. And, uh, and Amazon will pick in a, a spot price based on those bids. And the, and the price goes up and down over time. And the question that I want to address is this puzzle. This is basically one company selling a single resource, which is computation. But it's breaking that resource into three different products. So it's thinking about cloud computing. And it's selling you can buy it on demand. You can buy subscription. You can buy via an auction. And the question is, why would you do that? Does that make sense? Is there some sort of framework to think about these questions altogether? So let me say a little bit about why it's hard to think of why selling cloud computing is hard. So on the one hand, you have a big variety of customers. These customers want very different things. For, and for example, some have hard service guarantees that if you press a button, it's going to be there. Your cloud computing, the, the computation that you requested, it's going to come immediately. Um, this is, for example, the case of people who are running their website on the cloud. Another kind of consumer can time shift their demand around. Why would you be able to time shift your demand? It's because you're solving a big optimization problem, for example, or you're solving a big forecasting problem. You might be willing to do it instead of during the day at night or so on. Some consumers might not even know their demand, might learn their demand over time. On the other hand, you also have challenges from the supply side. So while you're trying to offer service guarantees, you have a limited service capacity. You're not able to, uh, to it might be hard for you to provide those service guarantees that the consumers want. And your cost, your marginal cost in cloud computing is very much driven by the price of electricity. This is the basic resource that goes into your production, is electricity. And that changes a lot over time. So your marginal cost is also changing a lot over time. So these are some of the challenges that are involved in, in serving this market. So let me start by comparing the two products that Microsoft offers, the on-demand and the subscription. Does it make sense at all to think about these two? And do they complement each other? And the answer is yes. So uh, some of the research that we've done here shows that when the key factor that you're concerned about is uncertainty about overall demand, then you want to offer a mix of long-term contracts and on-demand offerings. And we can actually prove that among contracts, this is a profit-maximizing one. In particular, this is true when valuation have this form, where you have a value per job of computation times the number of jobs, and you're learning one of these components over time. This can be tricky from the firm's perspective, because they, they need to optimize what would be their subscription fees and hourly prices. But they're great from a consumer perspective, 
because uh, the offerings are really simple, right? They just have a subscription price and a fixed price on top of that, and they give consumers a service guarantees. So they solve some of our demand side issues, but they don't quite solve our supply side issues. So how, how do we handle the supply side questions? So we have production costs that fluctuate over time, right? So the answer that Amazon came up with is saying, let's add a spot market. And that handles the fact that sometimes you have a lot of excess capacity and you can use a price that changes over time to tackle that. But there's a problem with using a spot market. A spot market is good for efficiency where, uh, so that your unused capacity doesn't go to waste. But auction theory tells us that there's actually, uh, if you use a standard auction, you end up with low profit margins. So it doesn't, it's not a, a good thing from a revenue perspective. And if it's not a good thing from a revenue perspective, what should we do? So what we're proposing is they can actually try to find the optimal prices to, to try to capture as much of the revenue while serving as much of the demand as possible. And these optimal prices are tricky to find because exactly because consumers, some of the consumers are time shifting their demand around. So some people are going to be willing to move and that makes it hard. But the work that we've done here actually showed that this problem is tractable. So we, are, we showed that under the appropriate set of assumptions, this problem of finding the optimal prices, it can be solved in polynomial time. And the idea is basically the following, is that consumers are strategic in a very simple way. Consumers, when they expect prices to go down, they're going to wait to buy if they, if, they are the ones, if they are the ones that can wait. But they're never going to wait for prices to go up. So that kind of very simple argument is enough to allow us to come up with the dynamic programming algorithms that solve this problem. So let me wrap this up by explaining uh, what we're trying to accomplish here. So the idea here, as I said in the beginning, is that you can take this question that sounds very qualitative, which is how should a company sell its cloud computing, and pose it as a mathematical problem. And you can think of the question as optimizing an entire business model. And in optimizing an entire business model means you're taking a single resource and building several different products out of it. And these products have different properties. And to come up with these proper, to come up with a proper selection of products to offer, you need a combination of tools from optimization, from algorithms, from game theory to, to produce the answer for what's the optimal answer. And there are both strategic and tactical aspects of this. So there's both the strategic aspect, which I, uh, which I think Amazon, for example, is doing very well, which is separating the spot market part from the part uh, on, the, on demand and subscription. And there are also the hard ones, which are also these tactical ones, which is given the pricing, given just uh, uh, a single one of these markets, how do you optimize pricing? How do you optimize subscription fee? So those are also very important. And they, they work together. And together, it makes a very interesting question and an important one to answer. And I just want to wrap it up by saying thank you, MSR, for being this great place for doing cross-disciplinary research. And happy birthday. Hey, thank you, Ilan. I want to commend him to put in this last sentence. I didn't get up to interrupt him for obvious reasons. <laughs> so, um, but we still have tons of time for questions. So. Oh, the algorithm is a dynamic programming algorithm. I'll be happy to tell you more offline. <laughs> Sorry. It's, uh, uh, yes. It seems that many of these problems are the same problems in the financial market. The solution they found there is you have like Uber and Nokia and it's also the market. So I can have my own hedge fund that I can sell you the tools that you want if you want you know, the price of oil to be predictable or an airline. Why don't you repeat it? Can you repeat? I, I will repeat the question. So I was just saying that many of these uh, questions have been dealt with in the financial markets. So if I'm an airline and I want stability for the price of oil that I'm going to pay over the next year, I buy options for oil. And there is openness in the market. So you can have your own hedge fund and you can you know, provide me options and contracts and futures and whatever. So do you think that you know, a similarly open market where everybody can compete to offer these services would be more efficient? So let me just say that uh, perhaps the best analogy to well, this can market. You do a sorry. Two second summary of so the, the two seconds went. question is how do you compare this to financial markets and there are the tools that were developed for efficiency and transparency in financial markets are they the, are they applicable here? And I'm going to say that uh, it's not clear to a, to which extent they are. 
the more that they are, the better for us it is. So some of the challenges are this is to some extent similar to electricity markets in the sense that you don't have co complete control of supply and demand, right? So uh, consumers come on the market and you got to serve them. You have, uh, but it's not exactly the same as uh, electricity markets because uh, these products that different companies offer are not completely substitutable. So some products come bundled with certain uh, resources uh, that are different. So there's some aspect of monopolistic competition in here that don't exist in the electricity market. So it's a very particular market that should be thought of on its, on its own. And I agree with you. The more we can bring in tools to create transparency and competition to this market, the, positive, uh, the more positive it is for the public. OK, thank you very much. Let's thank him again. And let's welcome our next